Want to know what goes into the pursuit of the perfect lap? Lotus F1 team official partner Shaw Men has exclusive behind-the-scenes access into exactly what it takes to be a Formula One star, like Kimi Raikkonen and Roman Grosjean. And we're giving you the chance to become exactly that. Either click the Shaw Men tick now for the chance to experience the thrill of driving a Lotus F1 team car, or watch how the experts do it first. It's time to get into the driver's seat, where every tenth of a second counts. Preparation is paramount to the perfect lap, it's not just about Kimi and Roman driving fast. In this world, the smallest detail can be the difference between victory or not. To find out about the meticulous planning and superstitions at the Lotus F1 team, click the tick now. Do not be under any illusions about just how fit Formula One drivers are. It's one of the most physically demanding sports there is. During a race, drivers can lose up to four kilos in sweat. Temperatures will reach 50 degrees and they'll experience the same g-force as a fighter pilot. One breath at the wrong time and they risk blacking out. You can see how drivers prepare their bodies by clicking the tick now. The thrill of Formula One is demonstrated best by the speeds the drivers reach. At up to 340 kilometers an hour, lightning fast reactions are not just race winners, they're life savers. To find out how drivers improve their reactions, click the tick now. It takes on average 30 minutes to change a regular tyre. The Lotus F1 team pit crew replaces four in three seconds, all done with adrenaline coursing through their veins. In the pursuit of the perfect lap, you train for thousands of hours, but the test lasts seconds. There's no room for individual glory. Everyone must work together. To hear how the Lotus F1 team unites to perform like a well-oiled machine, click the tick now. Imagine having a conversation with the noise level of a music gig in your ear while trying to keep your car on the track and staying ahead of your rivals. It's not easy, but communication between drivers and the pit wall is vital to the perfect lap. To find out how the Lotus F1 team communicates with Kimi and Roman, click the tick now. In pursuit of the perfect lap, drivers race against each other in the quest for glory. When it all comes together and they find themselves on the podium, the champagne and celebrations are enjoyed by all. Then the hard work starts all over again. To know how it feels to be part of a winning team, click the tick now. And now it's your turn. Keep watching and you could be driving a Lotus F1 team car with your very own pit crew there to help. Would you let them down? Hello and welcome to Formula Win. We've got loads of cash prizes up for grabs across six Formula One Grand Prix over the summer. And one of you could even win the chance to drive a real Lotus F1 team car with three of your friends. Here's how it works. Just get your hands on a can of Shaw Men or Shaw Maximum Protection Antiperspirant Deodorant and peel back the prize sticker. You'll find a unique code, which is your ticket to race. Enter this code online and you'll be given one of the two Lotus drivers, Kimi Raikkonen or Roman Grosjean, and a top 10 finishing position for the next Grand Prix. If your driver finishes in that place, you'll win a tenner. Better still, you can also enter into a draw to win a money can't buy Lotus F1 team driving experience. The light's off and we're go, go, go. Click the tick now. Before race, there's a lot of preparation. There's all the winter, there's all the work we do with the engineer, the factory. Uh, on the race weekend, the testing you do and trying to get the best car. Before the event, we would have an advanced crew go out two days before everyone else turns up to set the garage up, to, to set the, the pit wall up. There's a couple of days of setup work for, for a team of sort of 10 or 12 people. The driver needs to be prepared for every aspect that the race can throw at them, whether that's muscular strength and fitness, down to mental concentration and to reaction speeds. Some people have superstitions before the race. Uh, one guy nudges the car out by the rear wing, and another guy slaps the car on the nose as it leaves the grid. 
I used to have superstitions. Uh, they're gone with years. There's a little something I keep in my pocket uh, just before we go out to the race, really, but that, that's about it. I don't believe in all that. Just let them get on with it. It's the driver's job to make us look good. Perfect lap is everything coming together, really. Getting the car out, making sure everything's working perfectly there. Uh, no mistakes from the drivers and no mistakes from the guys, really. We exist to go fast on the track and pretty much every penny we spend is thought about is that going to make us quicker, is that going to make us more reliable, is that going to make the car safer. You check the data, you make sure everything's functioning on the car properly and then you eventually get the tyres ready, you get the driver in, you run through your pit stop practice to make sure everything's ready then, then you start the car up and send it to the grid. Mentally there is a lot of things going on, there's the warm up with your physio, there's a few games that you can play, then there's the last minute chat, you know, you can speak about whatever you want and then jump in the car, uh, put the seat belts and then, uh, then it's you, the car and the race. Click the tick now. An F1 driver needs to be extremely fit. The force is like the fastest roller coaster you've ever experienced and a 30 stone man sitting on your chest. <laughs> they compare driving an F1 car to running a marathon in just under two hours. Formula One is a sport. Some people think that we just sit in the car and then drive it. It's, it's not that at all. It, it's hot, it's demanding. You go up and down and all, all your body is shaking in every uh, possible way to feel good in the car then you need to feel good fitness wise. We try and train at least five days a week when we're not traveling. I prefer to go running outside uh, or cycling. Uh, sometimes we do a little bit of, of rowing as well, which is good because it combines uh, muscle and cardiovascular. We know rugby players and boxers have big necks to be able to take a lot of impact. Well, Roman needs to have that times 10. The neck is the muscle which is uh, suffering the most in a racing car. It's basically you know, a lot of Gs and a lot of corners and braking and acceleration. Everything goes through your, your neck. You won't see this in every gym. This is specifically designed for fighter pilots and we use this here for our drivers to improve their neck strength and to tolerate the high G-forces in the car. It's hard to explain exactly what goes on on your body when you go, go over the Gs. Uh, you know, it's, it's just like your stomach was going up and your head was going down and everything was mixing inside. We need strong legs as well for the braking. Braking is very hard in the car. Uh, you know, brake pedal is very stiff. Roman is great to train with. Not only is he my client, but he's also a really good friend. It's good to have this relationship with someone that you spend maybe more weekends than with your wife. Click the tick now. Reaction is everywhere, every time in F1 car. Very close fights, very quick cars, and everything goes quick. They really have to be on their game and have to think three times, if not more, as quick as the average athlete. Reaction is part of our job, it's very, very important, and uh, this is what we train with different uh, items. There is the Batak with the lights, that is a good one. The Batak machine is um, a reaction machine we use to test reactions and peripheral vision and it's widely used within the sports industry. Most Formula One teams, if not all, and other sports where reaction is paramount to an athlete. These guys are so quick, they can hit up to anything to 130 to 140 lights in 60 seconds, which is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, ball throwing thing is a good one. It's a reaction ball, so you throw it and it can go every direction to get the, the right reaction, right coordination, because you need to to put it straight in your hand. We used to use before the race uh, and we quite like it. The specific reactions they have to look out for during a lap. First day is the drop of the clutch pedal when the lights goes off, so that's a reaction. Changing gear, talking back to the engineers on the pit wall. Reaction between your eyes, uh, your body and your coordination. Uh, everything we can do to increase that, we do. There's various drills we encompass to test Roman's reactions. It will just blow your mind how quick they can react to specific conditions. Click the tick now.
A lot of our preparation for pit stops is based on practice. We look at the choreography of a stop, study it, see how we can make it more efficient. If we see a weakness in a certain position, then we'll change that person. Because I look at it as a sort of a dance, if you like. Every person has to put their foot in the right place at the right time. If they don't, then one of them stumbles, the whole thing stumbles over, and you'll take half a second to a second longer than you should. Pit crew is very important on the race day. You, you can easily lose one to two seconds on a pit stop, and this is a lot of time to get back on track. To improve pit stop, I can stop the car in the best position for them to get ready, and this is something we spend quite a lot of time on. You could do between two and four pit stops a race, so that's between two and four seconds, possibly, that you can help the team with the perfect lap. We basically practice around about 12 to 1400 times a year. Before we go to the first race, it'll be in the two, three, four hundred. And then every weekend, it will be about 60 a weekend. We need to knock tenths of a second off our pit stop to make it competitive. They are part of the winning or the losing. We win together or we lose together, and they play a very, very important role. Click the tick now. It's not easy to find the right way to communicate and to go through your feelings and your sensations in the car. And for the team as well, it's not always easy to tell you what to do or what not to do. A driver and engineer form a, a bond over a period of time and, and generally the sort of first year together is getting to know each other. Then after they've been together two or three years, let's say, they can communicate very well with each other. You need to pick a sensible place on the track to talk to them. You don't want to be talking to them when they're flat out in a high speed corner and startling them. The best time to do it is in braking into a low speed corner where the, where the engine noise is low and they can hear better. Generally, I'd say once every four or five laps, there's some talk. Telemetry is the car sending back to us what it's doing. So what RPM it's at, what speed it's going, what temperatures are on board. We've got about 100 sensors on the car and 1,000 channels of data from them and the engineers and the drivers use that information to help hone their driving style and the car setup. We can improve our communication by having some briefing before the race, debriefing after the race, coming at the factory saying that was good, that wasn't good. Kimi really doesn't communicate a great deal. He'll give very, very specific instructions. So he'll say, next pit stop I want a bit more front wing or a bit less front wing. With Roman, it's far more of a a conversation, him giving his feelings, discussing with his engineers. I really like to uh, go on with everybody I work with and uh, if I can spend a lot of time in Enstone with my guy and the engineers, the mechanics, uh, everybody, I like it and, and it, it feels like home being here. Click the tick now. Emotion doesn't really fit in anywhere during the race uh, until the checker flag comes. It's fantastic. It's what we turn up each week at the races for. You know, it's what everyone back at Endstone is working for. It's, it's, it's what we do. We go to every race with the aim of doing the best we can and to win every race. We don't ever go there thinking, oh, well, let's see if we can get a few points or not. Achieving success is, uh, is a great feeling. It's something uh, uh, yeah, you, you work very hard for. Everybody goes on the race weekend wanting the win. It's uh, you know, hard work for everybody. There's I don't know, 80, 200 people are on the, on the racetrack. There's 500 people at the factory here. And again, when you, when you stand on the podium, you're, you're not on your own. You are with all those guys with you. After the jumping, there's some more work to do. There's all the packing from the guys. And plus on the engineering side, we have normally debris, which lasts about one hour, 30 minutes. I'm not saying that there is no party. And sometimes there is. It's a mass of mixed emotions when it comes to the success of the team. We're away more than we're at home, so the team is more of a family, if you like. So it takes a lot of commitment to stay with a team and work with a team. And all the hours you put in, you're striving to win. So when you do win, there's a mass of emotions. You're happy for the fact that you brought the team success. You're relieved that you got through and there have been no problems. There's so many things wound up in success. It's 
you know, it's a real release, honestly. It's undescribable in a lot of ways. Click the tick now.